have an eyelash in my eye. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Ugh. Ew. I wanted to hop on here today and kind of have a little talk about um, medication, supplements, after cancer. Uh, I've had a lot of different kind of trial and errors throughout the summer and up until now trying different medications, different combinations of things. Um, and I think I finally found like a good balance of everything, so I thought that, you know, I would share it with you guys so maybe you can implement some of these things into your life. As always, make sure to consult medical professionals and your oncology team or your doctor team if you don't have cancer and you just want to try this out because everyone is different and what works for me might not work for you. Having said that, let's jump right into this video, but first I need some tea. My friend got me that cup uh, for Christmas and I'm just obsessed with it. So I really wanted to start off with just giving you kind of like an overview of my recovery after my stem cell transplant and it was a really hard time in terms of physical recovery. Um, so while I was doing my treatment, I was really sick, but I took care of myself in terms of what I ate. So I felt like I had a much better experience going through the whole stem cell transplant and the after part kind of getting back into like a healthy food routine because I never really stopped. I just kind of had to minimize and change a few things. So I found that part to be really easy um, and kind of seamless. It was hard to kind of readjust to now that I wasn't taking all these drugs anymore. Um, my body kind of had to reintroduce, I had to reintroduce some foods to my body because I was kind of like, eh, a little queasy with some things. But everything worked out pretty seamlessly in that aspect. Um, but what really was hard for me was what my body now looked like on the outside. I don't even know what it looked like on the inside. It was probably a shit show. But on the outside, I, you know, I had gained a lot of weight during my treatment. I gained like 25 pounds. Obviously, I had no hair, no eyebrows. My face was super swollen. When you have chemo and stuff, you get this thing called moon face. And it's basically like a really, really round, puffy face. Um, kind of like a baby or like a cherub, if you kind of know what that looks like. So I had like a really, really puffy face. I had no eyebrows, no hair. My skin was super, super pale, almost like a little bit translucent. And like this really weird milky color. And then I was really swollen because I was taking steroids and chemo and all of these different drugs um, plus they were pumping me full of like um, saline every day and like rinsing out my veins before and after I did chemo and I was on kidney stuff and all this crap so my body was a hot mess and I found that to be the hardest part just trying to kind of reintegrate back into society but looking like this Oompa Loompa and I don't want to sound vain when I say this, but you know, I was 22 years old and I was kind of just finishing university and trying to like restart and refigure out my life and I hated myself so much because every time I looked in the mirror, I couldn't recognize who I was and that really played a part on my mental state as well. And for those of you who don't know, I do have a lot of food anxiety and I used to have, I don't really know if it was an eating disorder, but like I wouldn't eat and work out all the time so but I got myself out of it but I've always had this like issue with like food and nutrition and calories in versus calories out and blah 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 and I'm much better now but during that time when I finished treatment and I was seeing myself in the way I looked and I was obviously not happy like this isn't who I am the way my lifestyle is it doesn't reflect the way I look so I had a lot of issues kind of overcoming that so basically it took me to three years essentially it'll be three years in January since I've had my stem cell transplant so it took it has taken me three years to get to a point where I finally feel like I am okay with the way I look and how I'm feeling and I know that you know I'm still gonna work towards being the best version of myself that I can be working out eating well whatever but I've kind of accepted that like if I can't get exactly back to the way I was before then that's okay and that took me a really long time to accept. That's kind of just like an overview of how I was feeling. Um, gained weight, had no hair, really swollen, really tired, but I also had really bad insomnia because I had like a lot of life anxiety and things on my mind, and I still do. Um, so I was taking like sleeping supplements and things like that, and they really did help, but I wasn't able to get back into a normal sleep routine until like literally two months ago, so. It was pretty shitty, but just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So that's kind of just like a quick 
that's kind of just a quick overview. Um, recently this summer, I finally uh, was able to get a referral to see an endocrinologist, which if you don't know, that is like a thyroid and hormone doctor who kind of monitors your thyroid and hormones, whatever. So I got some tests done and it turns out that I had developed hypothyroidism um, from my chemo and radiation. And basically what that is, is you have an underactive thyroid, so your thyroid is not producing enough hormones for your body. And I had already known that my body hormones were out of whack because um, in the early part of 2018, I think it was like January, February, I did a hormone test and I found out that I had zero estrogen and zero progesterone in my body which is so, so bad because estrogen is really important for people and women's especially because it's, um, I don't know like all the medical terminology, but essentially if you don't have enough estrogen in your body, your bone density decreases and you're at a higher risk for osteoporosis and also having heart attacks. So if you think about it um, and if you look at stats and stuff, it's generally males who have heart attacks and they have them younger because men don't make as much estrogen as women do but women since we make estrogen pretty much until we hit menopause we are kind of at a lower risk for any type of heart stuff like that but once you hit menopause and you go through it your hormones change and that's when um, you know your levels change and you have to just kind of monitor them to make sure they don't go crazy so I had zero <laughs> so this was really bad and my doctors like my oncologist and stuff thought that it would go back to normal by itself but it had been two years at this point and nothing was happening by itself. So I decided to just go and see the endocrinologist and get some help. And after uh, some trial and error with different medication, we finally landed on level thyroxine. So I take this every day and what it does is it levels out my hormones so that everything is kind of balanced. Um, so typical hormone range, typical hormone range is between one and five and for you to be considered like stable and like balanced and whatever the endocrinologist at least mine says she likes it to be under two so mine was 12 <laughs> and that's really bad I was super super high on the scale um, which indicates hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism would be if you were under one means you have an overactive thyroid and you're creating too much um, of some of these hormones um, so yeah, so went on the level thyroxine, noticed within a couple of weeks an immediate change in things, and at the same time, I also started taking birth control, um, and my experience with birth control before wasn't the best, so I actually tried birth control when I was 16 because I had really, really bad periods, I would miss school, I couldn't do things, I was like basically bedridden, I was in so much pain and agony, so I went on birth control for like two months and I absolutely hated it. And I was like, fuck this, and I just stopped, and I just dealt with it, and I got some prescription, like, painkillers, because my pain was, like, crippling. Um, so it's been, like, nine years since I've tried it again. But the reason that I went on it is because the birth control, obviously, would help with your period, but mainly for me, what it does um, is it levels out all my hormones. So, yeah, it's a fake hormone because my body's not making it, but it gives me what I need in order for my body to function properly. And I did talk about um, going on like just estrogen and progesterone versus taking the birth control. But the thing is, if you go on estrogen and progesterone pills, you have to take them at certain times of the month. And that was too much for me to remember. So I just decided to opt for the birth control. And it's super easy. I just take the thyroid and birth control at the same time every morning. And ever since I started taking them, I dropped 12 pounds, my skin bloated, de bloated, my skin de bloated, and I started feeling like much better um, about myself. My sleeping started to level out, um, my hair kind of got healthier again, and I just overall noticed a huge difference in how I was feeling and looking, and that was my main goal for it. And following up with blood tests, all my levels are kind of getting, they're not there yet, but getting back to the normal range, so that's really, really awesome. In case anyone cares or wants to know, the birth control brand I'm taking is called Lolo. Um, I don't have a period anymore, um, and I probably never will have one again. So even on the off weeks, I don't have a period. So, you know, I just take it for the hormones. On the flip side of that, I do like to take a lot of natural things. Um, one of them being vitamin D3. And I take five drops of these every morning just in some water. It's tasteless. 
Um, I take five because my naturopath recommended it to me since I am in recovery. Vitamin D is great because it helps with the absorption of other vitamins and minerals. It also helps to kind of balance and regulate your immunity system and it does aid in um, like strengthening bones and teeth as well, which is really important. And then alongside the vitamin D, I take Biosil. Um, and essentially this is for hair, skin, nails, whatever, teeth helps in the formation of collagen and supports hair, skin, and nail health. So it's kind of like a prenatal vitamin and it's got silica in it. It tastes like shit, <laughs> but it's really good for you. It really works. When I went through my first year of chemo, I used this religiously and I didn't lose all my hair and I looked much better than I did the second time around when I didn't use it. So I definitely recommend that. It's a little bit more pricey. It's like almost $40 for a bottle, but I definitely think it's worth the investment. If you want to try and like help your hair, skin, and nails kind of heal and start to grow and get stronger after cancer and you don't have to have had cancer to use this i used this before i was sick and i noticed a really big difference so definitely think about that something else i find that i found to be really helpful my naturopath recommended it to me is gi revive and basically this helps to relieve inflammatory conditions of the gi tract so as many of you know i have a really sensitive like body and my stomach is really sensitive to a lot of things and I found that my recovery after my stem cell transplant um, I had a lot of stomach issues and food issues and digesting food and not feeling sick from it so I would make some smoothies and I'd put this in it and it's got glutamine in it so it's really good for your gut health and then one other thing that I use I use this more like on and off not like religiously it's called um, hydrate beauty electrolyte and the brand is age quencher and it's just basically an electrolyte, tastes like orange, like an orange spritzer or something. And I use this pre or after a workout, mostly after because pre-workout, I just drink water. But um, just helps kind of give you your energy back after you sweat it out. And one last thing that I just started taking, I'm still not sure exactly how I feel about them, but I, I think I'm enjoying them, is this keratin hair growth formula and it basically just stimulates hair growth, enhances strength, and increases volume. Um, I got a six month supply, it was about $200. I have gotten a lot of compliments on my hair, it's like getting longer, it's starting to get like a nice like curl at the bottom, it feels healthier, it's still really like thin, you can see, it's still really thin at the top and I don't have a lot of volume, but I feel like the combination of these two with the vitamin D is like really good. So I'll keep you updated on the keratin because I have I've only been doing it for about a month and a half. And that's basically it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join our growing family. Um, this was just kind of a quick run through. But if there's anything you want me to go into more, drop me a comment below. And have a happy holidays and a happy new year. And I'll see you next time. Bye.